Welcome to Mind Pump. Hey, did you know your diet may be making you depressed? And if you change your diet to a more healthy one, that you may feel much better. By the way, the guys also talk about their own bouts of depression and what they did about it. Also, there's scientific proof that hot girls don't get cold. Yeah, that's true. By the way, the guys also talk about their own bouts of depression and what they did about it. In the second half of the show, we answer three live callers who had questions like, my legs aren't growing. What can I do to build more mass? And also, I get an afternoon crash. What can I do about that? The guys add, answer that and more in this episode. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. Do you want to spread the gospel of Mind Pump? Well, go to Mind Pump Clips and share that channel. It's a small channel right now, but you can help it grow. Enjoy the show. Are you feeling sad, depressed, down? Well, studies show that diet can have a profound effect on depression, especially in young men. So I just read a study where they took young men who were clinically depressed and all they did was change their diet mm. and they saw significant improvements in depression from diet. Now, this is not shocking to us. Yeah. I've seen this happen what, time and time again with what, clients. But what are the big three? Diet, exercise, relationships? Diet, exercise, sleep. sleep and yeah. then you could put- Oh, okay. Sleep, sleep, I thought yeah. big three was relationships. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the studies on exercise and depression, it has now, profound we, effects. Okay, Diet so, it, it now is now showing profound effects. I mean, you combine the two, it's like, holy cow. Now, when you say sleep, is that it, if, if sleep is just madly disrupted, but if your sleep is relatively good, yes, that wouldn't make the top. Yeah, like if you have a good diet, going from a good diet to another good diet, it's not going to have an, an effect on you, right? right? But these were people who- you know, so if you're depressed and you have a bad diet, if you eat the standard American diet, you know, right. you know heavily processed. Is that what food, it was that was in the studies that they uh, yeah they, were they all it to? yeah they all ate poorly. So yeah. the researchers put them on the Mediterranean diet, hmm. and it was controlled, and they watched them, and they saw significant improvements. And at the end of the study, the young men were like, "We like this, and we want to stick with this diet. That's how great this is." And you know, the benefit, the 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 value of this is the side effects are you get leaner. You're healthier, right? Unlike other pharmaceuticals where side effects can include things like sexual dysfunction, weight gain, other potential effects, lethargy or hypomania or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the case with diet. The side effects are all good stuff. Yeah, positive so, side effects. Exactly. Yeah. And then the effects don't wear off. With mm -hmm. medications, oftentimes you find that starts to happen. Mm -hmm. With uh, the diet, I bet you if we continue to follow these young men, the ones that stuck to eating a healthier diet would notice better and better effects as it continues to go on. Have any of you uh, battled with depression? Ooh. Uh, I mean, I've had mm -hmm. uh, periods of time that were challenging, but I don't know if you would call that depression. I mean, only you can answer that. Yeah, you know? I guess. Do you think so or no? Um, Battled with it? Probably not. Well, I mean, I struggled with it, overcame it, dealt with it, period. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to, it doesn't even be crippling. You mean, have I ever felt depressed? Or? Yeah, yeah. Have you, oh, yeah, have you, and, sure. And, and, so you have. Sure, from life circumstances, yeah, for yeah. sure. And you, can, you, can you recall that time in your life and then what got you through it? Oh, I and mean, how long were you in it for? Oh, it was a while. I mean, I mean, after I, after I had somebody close to me die, um, I had, and obviously I went through a divorce, which was really, really challenging. Um, what helped me with people around me, um, exercise and then consistency with my structure. So like I didn't allow, or I tried not to allow my, my structured day or my responsibilities to fall apart. Mm. So I tried to stay on task, which helped provide kind of structure but it got better because I think it was it was situational. You know, there's people with like chronic depression where it's it's not necessarily situational. You know, like everybody gets sad if someone dies. That's normal. Mm -hmm. But like, what if you're just sad? Yeah. And there's nothing really happened. You know, I think that's where it gets really challenging. I don't know. Yeah. I was trying to think about that. I think uh, for me, it was, it's more like I didn't realize it, but like looking back, you're like, oh, wow, that's, those are total signs of depression. Like for instance, um, you know, just always wanting to be in bed and sleep, like, mm. like sleep an excess amount That's of time, true, yeah. you know, longer than, you know, I should have, instead of getting up and like being productive and, and going to hang out with my friends, I'd isolate myself away from my friends and would just sleep. Was this when the Spice Girls broke up? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah, what, Sporty what, Spice, man. What uh, was it that hit you? Uh, you? You know, it was just being uh, away from my comfort of here uh, with family, friends, and like my entire environment here. Oh, that's when you left Girl for college? Broken up. Yeah. And then I was in like, uh, I was just, you know, a lot of uncertainty out there for me and it was like freezing and like, you know, you start like piling on 
a lot to like whatever situation that's tough that you're in. And then, um, and then I just let it sort of spiral, uh, to the point where I was just like, I, it, it was starting to affect me physically, but yeah, I had to just like, I had to just get out there, get as much sun and you don't get as much sunlight as well during the winter uh, in Chicago. So yeah, it was just all a combination of all those things, but, um, getting back into better, um, food and, and, um, relationships and like hanging out and like forcing myself to go like, you know, outside my comfort and hang out with people that I didn't know, uh, you know, really kind of pulled me out of it. But yeah, yeah, that and exercise, of course. Adam, you said it was when you, you lost your house, your first house, right? Yeah. But you know what? uh, I can totally relate to what Justin said was, uh, a lot of that's hindsight when I was in it, I didn't know that. That's a good point. Yeah. I I didn't know it because, um, I didn't, one, I didn't think of me as a person like that. I definitely was not ever someone who was like, feel sorry for himself, had enough stuff that I went through in the past that, um, I didn't make that connection right away. I just, I had a lot of the symptoms that Justin was describing where it's like, I just wanted to lay around. I know I love working out. I didn't have motivation to work out. I love basketball. I didn't have motivation to play basketball. I just, I was in a negative mood. I was constantly replaying this. Like I can't like my, up in that point. And so I, for the audience that doesn't know this, like I had built up this thing about, you know, uh, coming from n- not much, right. As far as, you know, generational wealth or help or support financially like i didn't have much or any and a huge goal of mine was to you know get to a place where i could buy my own home and to me when i was a young teenager you know early teens uh to me that was as for as far as i could see you know was like that's the pinnacle for me like my my family doesn't have even own their own home if i can get a career and a job and save enough money to own my own home like that's the pinnacle and I reached that relatively early. I was only, you know, 21 years old when that happened. And, uh, you know, from 21 to 27 ish, I would say I was on top of the world. And then, uh, and then the big correction happened. And, and the part that was really hard for me that, and why it was interesting, why I went through the depression was because I chose to short sell it. I actually had, I had good, I had a good job. I could afford to make the payments but it was advised to me by my best friend at the time who was in the mortgage industry. And what he was telling me is like, bro, we bought at the peak. You've got, you know, your, your house is going to, I had, I had pulled out one time and paid my car loans off. So then I pulled like another $80,000 out of the house. So I was upside down by over a hundred K by this time. And he says, listen, everybody's going to be lo- like, everyone's going to be losing their house. It's going to be a slap on the wrist. It's going to ding your credit and then you'll rebuild it back. And that I just, I, I wrestled with that for months. I held on said, no, 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 I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then it just, the market just kept doing this. Yeah. And so I was just watching myself lose equity and then finally convinced my, and he, and he had like had all the tricks. I literally actually lived there. I don't know if I've ever shared this with you guys. I've, I lived there for two years mortgage free. So I stacked a ton of cash. It was it was the right decision to do that. Yeah, it messed my credit up and that took me a good 5 6 years to like rebuild that and fix that. But the thing that happened that I didn't see was how the de- because I had identified so much. It was such a big deal. Yeah, it was such you. a big yeah. deal to me and I and I, I made and I made it such a, 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 a something that isn't that big of a deal. When I think about it now today and where 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 I've come now, I'm just like it, that means nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's not a big deal. A lot of people can have a house. It doesn't mean doesn't really mean that much, right? Sure it was a big accomplishment for me in my life and so like that, but I had identified so much with that. And I also identified with someone who was I at that point I had never missed a payment. I never had a, a late fee. I never had bad credit. I've all I had impeccable credit. When did you realize like you were like, "Oh shit, I was depressed?" It wasn't until years later when I look back, when I, when I look back at that, that moment in my life that was, and it was, it lasted for like six months of that feeling of just not being able to kind of get up and do shit, not feeling motivated to do the things that I love to do. I, I know there's like a clinical period of time, like, cause there's like, nor- there's like what they would consider normal, healthy, like you're sad, depressed, right? Like something happens, you lose your job, you lose a family member, a friend, relationship, whatever. And then there's like a, it has to last a certain period of time for them to consider you clinically depressed. I don't know what that number is. Maybe Doug, you can look that up. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, cause it's, it's, and now here's a, here's the challenge is that a, a lot of, we're, we're, we're led to believe that we're never supposed to be sad. We're never supposed to be depressed. So any amount of depression is bad. This needs to get treated. 
but that's not true. It's normal. It's normal. Yeah. You're supposed to be sad. If you lose your house, something you, you, you worked up towards, you're supposed to be, that's normal, right? Yeah. I was supposed to be sad after losing somebody close to me or mm -hmm. going through a divorce or, you know, what you went through, Justin, right? That's normal. Right. But then there's a period of time and I don't know what they classified as, but once it goes past a certain period of time where, okay, this is like clinical depression. This is, I'm not coming I out I of think it. it has more to do, it has more to do with, um, you know, empathy and and loving yourself, right? Like, I I actually wasn't sad. I was like, I was angry and disappointed in myself. Like, I wasn't. I wasn't like, oh, boo hoo. I I chose to walk sure. away from the house. But what what ate away at me was like, now I had this voice in my head, like, you're not who you thought you were. Like, you you you're just like your parents. You're like that type of stuff. So mm. I was beating myself up yeah. inside, yeah. Right? and so there was a a lot of probably anger and hate and resentment towards myself. And I, what really snapped me out, which is this is why I love I, another reason why I'm so drawn to health and fitness, is because it it has a sneaky way of teaching you how to love yourself. Right. And to be empathetic and understanding and like you ain't gonna grow unless you're uncomfortable, let's be honest. Right. That's just the so, bottom line. Right. So Wow, look at this. This is I did not know this. So Doug brought up, I guess, a diagnosis of major depression depressive disorder means you have felt sad, low, or worthless most days for at least two weeks. That's it. While also having other symptoms such as sleep problems, loss of interest in activities, or change in appetite. Okay. Name one person on earth. I know. I feel like everybody falls in that category. That's at some weird. Point. I look, I'm not a doctor, so I want to say Well, that's that why first, it's but that's that, crazy to me. No, I don't think so. I, I think I mean No, because that means you get treated. That's what I mean by that. Not oh, that saying you, that you're oh, not that you, oh, that's what you mean by that. Yeah, like, like that's what I mean by clinical like someone depression. Someone deals with a little bit of depression and we have a pill to throw at that's it. That's right what away. I mean oh, by, oh, by I clinical depression. Yeah, yeah, that, no, 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 I mean, no. you could call it whatever the hell you want. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying like that. Oh, I mean, that's so That's wild. Who I mean, never obviously, felt sad for two weeks? Obviously, it's a yeah. massive spectrum, right? You uh, break up with your girlfriend when you're 15 years old, you're going to be sad for two weeks. You know what I mean? Does that mean you got to go get. I don't know. That's it's wild to well, me. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the, to me, and I've I've been around um, like some parents that uh, like their kid scrapes their knee, and then they they give them like Advil and Tylenol right away, and it's like they don't want them to experience the pain of it, and it's like this is, I don't know. To me, it's like it's character building. Like this is this is all part of the journey. Is like having to go through some of these tough moments, and you know, depression. Obviously, it's a tough place to be when you're sad and you don't feel like you want to. Uh, get up and, and and face it, but uh, you know to to just mask it. To me, I, yeah. I, I and know, there's definitely there's definitely times there's times need, where you need yeah. it, obviously, to intervene. So yeah, I'm not I, I'm not belittling that. Yeah, I'm just no, I'm with to, you. I'm yeah. with you on that. I just think look, look, growth never happens when you're comfortable. It just doesn't yeah. work that way. There, otherwise, there's no there's no reason for you to grow. You know, there's no reason for you to change unless you're super uncomfortable. And that's what those because when you look back to those moments that were hard. I bet you, I bet you, it was some of the biggest growth what's, we all went through. What's yeah. that? What is that? Transformative what's that, for me. What's that great proverb? The the and I and I've heard. I know I heard Tom Brady tell it before. I've heard it several times before. I think it's a Chinese proverb. Where Doug, do you know this one? Where he 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 tells the story about his son who's supposed to go off to war. Oh, and his son, his maybe son, you can find that Doug. His, his son falls off the horse, and then in, and somebody goes like, "Oh my God, so sorry that's, for his, And he says, "Maybe." Or, he goes, "Maybe or perhaps or something." Yeah, like yeah that. perhaps or something like that. I mean, that's such a great proverb, for that. and I think that's really what moved me out of it. Eventually, was it actually ended up creating more opportunity. Uh, I saved more money. It did end up benefiting me in the long run. Temporarily, it, I, I went through this period of time where there's depression and it's like, and what it really taught me was a lesson that I had already knew before, which is that like, it really does depend. And there's, and there is opportunity in every, in, in every situation like that. And to reframe anything that I know. So if I am in my, so now when I'm faced with these moments in my darkest of times or biggest struggles that I've had since that period in my life, I always have this ability now to kind of reframe that situation and be like, oh, where's the opportunity here? Mm -hmm. That's what got me through the testosterone thing because that was the second time that I'd experienced anything that I would consider. And that was more, that was hormonally uh, right, induced which, depression. Which now to me, that was a new, like it was uncontrollable. The other one yeah. was controllable. Yeah. I, if I had better disciplines, I did this, this, this is like, oh, this kind of- physiology you're doing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. that I'm physically feeling that way. But still, because I had gone through it before and I had a different attitude going into it, I, I reframed it. And you remember what happened? I was, I told you guys like, oh, here's a great opportunity. I'm going to get back in basketball. And then I tore my Achilles. <laughs> I right? know, that's true. And I was like, fuck. You know what I'm saying? But actually, that hey, What me, am I supposed to learn take here? Take this away from me. Right. You know, I got back into reading really big and heavy again, which of course is, you know, always benefited me when I do that. And so, you know, it just, it was like, oh, I think this is the direction. No, this is not it. Oh, maybe here's an opportunity here for me. And so, hey, did you find it, Doug? 
Yeah, Andrew you, found it. Can you read it, Doug? Sure. Is it, is it super long? Uh, it's a little long, but not too bad. It's worth it, though. It's good. Okay, so it's a parable. It's a Chinese parable. And uh, had one of his farmer, his horses run away. But one day later, the horse returned with 10 other horses. Uh, so what started as an agricultural tragedy turned into a positive. The farmer now enjoyed abundance of riches thanks to his runaway horse. Later, the farmer's son falls off one of the horses and breaks his leg. The community originally treats the boy's injury as catastrophic, but then Chinese rulers started drafting young boys to go off into war. The boy was unable to serve because his leg was broken. The farmer's neighbors changed their outlook and begin to view the boy's injury as a blessing, but the farmer, who always kept a level outlook, wouldn't go there. He just said, maybe. And this, this article doesn't really have the whole thing. Yeah, this is actually it. not a good way to tell it either. So uh, uh, Andrew can do it for our YouTube audience. If you clip uh, out of Man in an Arena, there's a clip, and you can probably find it on YouTube, of Tom Brady. Talking, and he tells it from the perspective of the uh, people saying like, oh my God, that's it's so great. bad. Or and that's then, sad. And then the farmer says, depends. Yeah, or, the story I heard is like when the horse ran away, oh, that's a horrible thing happened. He said, well, maybe. Maybe. And then the yeah. horses come back and it's, oh, that's uh, that's you know great thing. Yeah, he maybe. Goes, maybe. Yeah. And then the son falls off breaks his leg oh that's a horrible thing well maybe yeah and then they you know he doesn't get drafted so that's his attitude throughout yes the entire that's day. how i've heard the yeah, I've, yeah. that's how i've heard it told to me before and i think it's just a, it's such a powerful story when you think about that because my life has been that way and when i look back now and i reflect on the most challenging the darkest the most depressing times all all the above those have led to the most prosperous best times, largest bits of growth, most successful times yeah. in my life. So right before, you know, it's the the worst is when it gets the best. And so now when those times, because they don't stop, they continue to happen in your life. It's inevitable. It's just the way it is. Yeah. It, now I just, you know, obviously much older and w wiser, I come into a situation like that and I face it with the attitude of like, boy, this really sucks. In fact, this is one of the worst times ever, which means... Hopefully on the other side of this, it's going to be one of the best times it's ever been. So I can't wait to make it through this bullshit mm -hmm. because it's about to get good, you know? So I think that's so important when you're, when you're faced in that. Well, area. I mean, that's in the, you know, from our perspective, right. As fitness professionals, the, the fit, healthy version of you is most likely going to withstand or more likely to withstand life's yeah. challenges which are inevitable. It'll be the most resilient version of you. Though. Yeah. So, and then for, you know, you asked me how, you know, what I did, cause that was a long period for me. Cause it was, there was a lot in between that too. And the death of, of someone close to me and, and the divorce happened within a few couple of years of each other. And there was more stuff in between that. Right. So it was like a four year period. It was really, really hard, but maintaining my structure, maintaining the stuff that I did during the day, going to work, maintaining my workouts, even though they weren't great workouts. They were just, I'm here. I'm here taking care of myself. It kept that structure and it kind of kept me trudging forward, moving forward, moving forward. And in and, and looking back, there was growth that whole time. It sucks. It definitely sucked. But I think that's uh, that's an important part of of all of this. And, and you know, again, the study shows diet has a profound ef ef effect on this kind of stuff. Exercise too. So think about the most challenging time in your life and then think about how you would handle that being unhealthy and unfit versus how you would handle that healthy and fit and which version of you is most likely to handle. Cause the other side of this, Adam is when you you're in these tough moments, sometimes you don't want to face it. And so what do you do? You numb yourself, you distract yeah. yourself and you put yourself deeper in the well, water. Well that right? there. So there's the, the, you know, you, you point out like the, the fine line between what you were doing and what, what you just said, Yep. which is like, there's this fine line of, uh, Am I doing all this stuff because it's it's potentially better in me, help me work through this depression and improve it, or am I doing it because I'm it's distracting me right. from doing the internal right. work that I need to get done on this? And so, and that goes back to why I said that I think it has a lot to do with loving yourself, right? Like I had to forgive myself over that, and like, and then also remind myself like that isn't who you are because mm -hmm. you had a a bad credit score for <laughs> four years of your life yep. like that, that's not who i am you, you know it's funny i was just on a podcast where this this guy interviewed me and he goes uh you know there was a quote in in uh, the resistance training revolution where it says um you know exercise not because you hate yourself but because you love yourself and he goes he goes some people hear that and that doesn't make any sense and you just said that you got to love yourself and he goes what is what does that mean i said it's not a feeling it's not the feeling of love that's right, you're, you're not going to yeah you're not going to sit there and be like 
oh my god, I got this warm, fuzzy feeling about myself because I just always hugging yourself. Yeah, yeah, defaulted on this property, or I just lost my job, or I just you know because of my actions, I just you know destroyed this relationship, whatever. That's not what that means. You're not going to have this warm, fuzzy feeling. It's action. Mm -hmm. It's okay. How do I love myself? Well, well, here's what I got to do. This is what I would do if I love. This is what love looks like. It's hard truths. It's taking these actions. It's not doing this. It's doing that. It's not the feeling. I, I want to say that because I think sometimes people get confused and they're like, well, how can I love myself when I I feel unhealthy or I don't feel good or I did all this terrible stuff? It's like, no, no, no that's not the same. I mean, look, I, I love you guys through action. I don't always feel like I love you guys, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But I do through action and that's what makes this partnership you know, also work yeah, yeah. You know, pretty well. Boom, the giveaway for today. Ready for this? Two programs. MAPS Symmetry. This is the program that helps balance out the body. And MAPS Strong. This is a strength training program designed by strongman competitor Robert Oberst with us. So this is a strongman-inspired workout program. Both of them you can get for free because that's the promotion this month. I'll get to that in just a second. Here's how you can win them. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. That's the only place we're going to notify you if you win in the comment section that you win free access to Map Symmetry and Map Strong. Now, everyone else, those are the programs that are on sale all month long. You've asked for it, you got it. 50% off Map Symmetry, 50% off Map Strong. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below to get our discount. All right, here comes the show. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, want, I, I have something that's uh, off note that I saw. One of you was talking about it, and it piqued my interest that. Uh, Hot chicks don't get cold. No, they don't. <laughs> is that you? Is it yeah. you? <laughs> like, now that sounds like a Chinese proverb. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is, a, what, like, this is a study here? I am They're, interested in. Yes. <laughs> so they did a study. So, okay. So, and this is how this article I thought was hilarious. We've all seen those girls walk into the club and then night, at night it's freezing outside and dudes are covered up and chicks are wearing barely anything. You're like, yeah. how are they like going in and out and like, What's going on? And this is crazy. Well, anyway, they did a study on this. <laughs> no way. And they found that women who were more obsessed, women who were more obsessed with their appearance and who dressed this particular way, more disconnected from their body signals. So they did feel cold, but they didn't feel cold. So they're disconnected from their body because they, they identified so strongly with their appearance. Wow. So that's they actually studied wow. this. So what's interesting about that is you would think the reverse would be true. Because they're, they're so, their body? yeah, they're so obsessed with their body, they would be hyper aware of its up and down of temperatures. But what you're saying is, because of the <laughs> yeah. obsession, it it blunts their signal to read. They're how, just disconnected. Um, yeah, they're just disconnected from. Uh, I'm gonna I'll pull up the article so, so I can read. Maybe maybe because they're they're so focused on what other people think about their appearance that they're not as much aware of their own. That, Maybe well, that's what they're, they're, they're more concerned about what other people think about their body than they are about how their own body here's feels. The quote from the, here's the quote from the study. Okay. We found that women who are more highly focused on their appearance show no relationship between how little clothing they're wearing and the reported feelings of being cold on a cold night out. These findings suggest that to an extent, women self-objectify. They increasingly lose access to their own physical experiences. So it's literally creating dysfunction. So what does that say about Katrina? Because she's cold all the time. <laughs> That's good, maybe, huh? <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. Like every girl I've ever dated, like yeah, always freezing, always cold all the time. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you be a little more obsessed with your. Yeah, you're with yeah. some. You're with some secure Not women. Hot enough, yeah. Yeah. That's what that yeah. means. Yeah, that means. I know. Isn't that funny? Because yeah, yeah. I read the article and I'm like, oh, those are yeah. my favorite studies when you yeah. come with studies like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do notice that though when you go to the clubs and you'd see these like, girls how they dress wearing like basically that? nothing, and then they're just yeah, and it's freezing outside. I mean, this is even in chicago where it was like you get the wind chill and all this and they're just still rocking it you know go for it yeah it i like, i didn't think about that until literally you just said it right now and it so is, did i when i read the article yeah, i was like, like that's true because yeah. i remember i there was, i mean I, I never really went out a lot clubbing because I, I was married so young but the few times i did i remember i'd be with my jacket and i'm freezing and you're seeing these girls walk around you're like how are they how are they able to do this right now? It's so cold outside. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of studies, study uh, study came out on the safety and efficacy of TRT for health. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, interesting. so they they did this really good study. They actually did analyze tremendous amounts of data and found that uh, in hypogonadal men, so men with low testosterone who took testosterone. Okay, so this was medically used testosterone, not like bodybuilders who use anabolics or whatever for 
competition, but men who take testosterone supervised by doctors, they found no increase in, because the, 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 the thought in the past was it's going to increase your heart attack risk. It's going to increase your stroke risk. You're going to get higher rates of prostate cancer, right? That's always the, those were, that was the propaganda or whatever. No, none of those were increased. In fact, uh, there were decreases, slight insignificant or statistically insignificant decreases in a lot of those things, meaning probably the same. So no increased risk of, of all those fears wow. that we heard in the past wow. by being on TRT. I, you know, have you, when's the last time you looked up articles to see like uh, the growth of that space? I mean, we, we speculated uh, more than a couple of years ago on that. I mean, I think that's yeah, going to be assume it definitely increased over the last few years. Oh, God, well, it's I mean, everywhere. if it moves yeah. like, okay, so I compared it to the medical marijuana space. That's a great comparison. And you know, if it, if it's going to be anything like that, it, it moves quick. And once, once well, thing, and, it, and this is how I remember, like it started off with the, the few people that were willing to do it when it was a little gray and risky. And there's, you know, a handful of them here and there. And then all of a sudden, the 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 support from studies start coming out that start backing up the benefits and all the positive things about it. And then it just starts to well, pile on fast. It's definitely still far removed from like your general practitioner kind of like setting for yeah. hospitals. Like it, it's always interesting to me, like how little and, and, the, and how much they ask, but also they're just like unaware of of you know like how to even address a lot of these hormone issues that are happening. Well, there was a lot of stigma is what it was. So, so it was always, it was legal to be prescribed uh, for a while now, but there was a stigma because uh, testosterone is also a performance enhancing substance. So mm. an athlete could take extra testosterone and compete at higher levels. There was so, also a lack of education in the general practitioner yes. on- uh, Well, because it was scheduled and because it was a PED, yeah. doctors were like, I'm not yeah, touching this stuff. Definitely. Now, yeah. the funny thing is, you, they prescribe insulin. They prescribe thyroid. Yeah, the irony. Right. And, yeah. and, and those are far more potentially dangerous than testosterone. Testosterone's very relatively safe hormone yeah. in, in comparison. So that's the irony of it. But what's happened is um, the way that society has viewed it. So it wasn't that long ago if a man said he took testosterone, it was kind of embarrassing. Or what are you, a bodybuilder? Or what are you, whatever. Now it's like not a big deal. And not only that, it's starting to get to the point where it's become like this, oh, it's cool. And I and it makes me feel good. And look, I look great and all that kind of, so it's becoming kind of trendy. So yeah. you well, see this explosion. Yeah. Thanks, I don't Joe wanna, Rogan. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to get totally. too, too far into the weeds with it. But I was listening to um, this guy who was like a, a rep for a uh, pharmaceutical company. And he was talking about like how, you know, we, we get information and, and stuff from our general practitioners. Well, there's been incentives to not have them, you know, defer out to like blood labs and all that to like reduce the amount of numbers because it costs the insurance companies, oh, wow. you know, for them to even recommend that. And so be, because it's a big business and it's bottom line and every year they have to show increase, you know, they've, they've applied methods to, uh, so deter uh, physicians from even recommending like major blood panels and, and things like Interesting. that. Interesting. Yeah. Which I is frustrating. Yeah. yeah. So it's wow. like, yeah, so of course they're not going to really dive into, because that takes a lot of investigation and detective well, work. Well, what's interesting about it, we talked about depression earlier. A man with low testosterone is going to feel physiological depression. And if the doctor doesn't test his testosterone levels, which they may not, they may be like, oh, you're sad. Oh, you feel down. Oh, you have low energy. Oh, you're depressed. Here's an SSRI. Mm -hmm. When he just might have low testosterone. Not only that, but a, a, a guy who could have had pinched, potentially most of his life ran at 900 to 1,000, and now he's running at 450. Which, which is, is still within range. Which is still within, half. yeah, which is not a dangerous range where a general practitioner would never prescribe it, but this dude is running at half of what he is. You absolutely can have those yeah. side effects symptoms. Yep. I, I, and I think that's where a, a lot of the... The general practitioners, at least my experience of talking to them about this years ago, because you're right. Uh, there, I mean, if you were dangerously low, then a GP would would send you to right. a specialist. You would get it done, right. but you would have to be dangerously low mm -hmm. for them to even consider that route. Where it's completely changed now. Now it is. Now they lean more on the feedback from the actual client of like, if you go to like an actual hormone specialist now, that's what they, they'll lean more on that than the actual numbers. Yeah. You know, I've learned mm -hmm. enough from Dr. Rand and their team that it's like, you know, if you tell me, if you check, I, think, I forget what the number is for them. If you check like six of the 12 things on the list that of symptoms, but yet you still have 600 or whatever that, they would still consider bringing and you up. let's see how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, there's some myths around it too, where people think, well, if I go on it and try it, I thought this, if I go on and try it and then come off, now I'm screwed forever. That's right. not true. 
you'll go back to the where you whatever were before, you were before that whatever yeah. you were before right, right. so um, if you by the way if this is something you're interested in we we work with a great uh, facility you go to mphormones.com you can set up an appointment hmm. do it with a doctor um, and make sure they're good doctors yeah. uh, that you know work with this kind of stuff it's all important I had a uh, a bit of an update uh, for Adam because of uh, remember. You used to call it memes uh, <laughs> when it was first like a big thing. You got to you got to be like a like a memes. long long time listener to Yeah, like Adam five. used to call him memes. He's like, "I posted this meme the other day." <laughs> and uh it, you know, obviously this is like a new form thing that uh, we saw kind of pop up. Um and I was watching this documentary that uh I think it was on Hulu, but they were it was kind of going into like the QAnon, all this stuff, and like some of those like chat rooms and and places where um, there's like kind of like hidden meaning, messaging, and like extreme stuff to kind of create chaos and stuff within the social fabric, the structure of everything that we're seeing. And you know, you see this sort of on the the dark side of of social media and all this. And uh, so, in terms of like memes, you see a lot of attention that, that they get and all this. And, and apparently, and I didn't, I didn't even know this, but, uh, there's, they were attributing some of this to like mimetic magic. So that what? mean, yeah, like it's, it's a thing. Like it's, it's, it's a practice that's like ancient or whatever is like, uh, being able to like, um, cast like some kind of spell through imagery and some kind of like messaging on it to to affect people, <laughs> and, and, and and there's all these people that are like these Dungeons and Dragon looking people that are like totally into it, and like this is all part of their. <laughs> remember when the remember when the internet thing, was and it's like dark magic that they're they're putting in. Remember it. when the internet was supposed to bring like harmony and peace, oh and knowledge to everybody? <laughs> yeah, and that now we have. When like, I hear stuff like this, you you I mean obviously this is. Uh, the natural evolution of things, right? Like, yeah. you, like you said, like it comes out harmony, peace, it's all good, and then it gets flooded with everybody, and then here comes the evil, the badness yeah. with that. So, like, when when you think ten years from now, like, what do you see? How this and thinking optimistically, not like you know, oh my god, we're fucked. You know, like it's <laughs> we're gonna figure this out, like we always do. I believe so. But how does that change the landscape? of you know social media online presence and you know is it possible because it's such a powerful like i i kind of foresee this like it has become one of the most powerful and the coolest tools mankind has ever invented oh it's 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 like the gutenberg printing press times a billion okay so right? to that point because of it it's still in its infancy and we're so amazed by it and we're still addicted to it but i actually think in like 15 20 years from now like you know, we'll look at it as like, yeah, it's a great tool, but it ain't that big of a deal anymore. Like, I, I, I think, I think social media and stuff like that, it's, it's still, it's still not at its peak. It's still got to go through that phase or that. But if you fast forward far enough, like to like our kids, our ages or that, it, the, I thought a lot about the this. next version. I feel like nobody's ever going to get it right. You know, can see in the future like that, but like, especially how we communicate it, it changes in such an interesting way. I'm like, I'm curious to, to speculate and see where you guys think. Yeah. It's going. So I think a lot about this actually. And, um, I think what you're, what you're sober what, or no, all, all states, <laughs> all sit states there and think combined. about it. <laughs> I don't know. So I remember as a kid, when the internet first came out, I had these debates and arguments with my aunts and uncles and I'd sit down and go, you don't understand. Humans are going to have access to all the information of all of human history. How come it's I can? Be, how come I feel like I could role play that conversation? Oh, well. so, <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, you don't. When we know everything, yeah. we're going to have all the answers, and everyone's going to work together, and it's going to be amazing. And they're like, that's not how it works. I'm like, yes, it is. And they were right, of course, because knowledge is not wisdom. So what I think is going to happen is I think we're going to go through the progression of what you would see with like a human. So you see a human become a toddler, then a teenager than a young adult, middle-aged, and older person. And I think what we're in right now is the teenager, young adult stage. Of social where, media and stuff? Yeah, well, just to internet. Okay, okay. Like, so much information. Everybody thinks they know everything. We're arguing <laughs> about everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, That's I think- That's a good analogy. And I think eventually old wisdom is going to become- <laughs> Uh, popular. Okay, again. so yeah, I, I think I, you're starting to see that. Everybody's going to have to go on a walkabout. So I, I kind of think we're saying the same themselves. thing. Yeah. I really do. So in, in 20 years from now, we'll be the the internet will be the old wise man and we'll use it for what it's good for. Yeah. We'll dismiss it for bullshit, you know? And I think and people I, are going to value wisdom again. Yeah. I think they're going to value wisdom, yeah. old practices, uh -huh. old things, because we've gone through this process. Now, the only fear I have is, are we going to make it <laughs> to that point right. or destroy ourselves? We will. We always do. 
We always do. Yeah. We'll make we it. don't know that. Huh? You don't know that. <laughs> you don't know if we always have. <laughs> no, it's true. I That's mean, fair. yeah, there's been catastrophes, That's... You know, global catastrophes, and it... we've recreated our societies over and over again. I so, mean, you know, it might be Mad Max. Who knows? <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're up. We're due. Yeah, I, who knows? I have a, I have a, a random random question for you guys because you guys are more into this stuff, like anthropology and shit like that. Have we ever found, like, you know, when we see, like, the long bowmen and we see, like, when we dig up and we find, like, these hunters and stuff like that, it, do we ever find like a a female long bowman? Oh no! Okay, so mm. there's definitely cases where they find what seem to be like female warriors and hunters. Yeah, because but I, it's I, not the it's it's usually the exception, not the yeah. rule. Right, right. Which is what I would Outliers. I would I would think it would be like that, right? Because I don't. I think we were even even back then, as dumb as we were all the way back then. I still think we would be wise enough. Okay, let's just put our put ourselves here. Okay. If we if we hunt and before we go out on hunts, I guarantee we all practice, right? We probably yeah. have targets and we practice practice. And if there was a chick who's fucking badass and she's smoking everybody, yeah. bullseye, bullseye, to think that we would not be wise enough to bring her on the hunt, I, I for sure think that would happen. Yeah, no, you, I okay. just I think I just think it's the exception to the rule. It's it, just probably a smaller percentage of that. Okay, so and in, in, if you go further back, the root of it is that men are expendable and women are not. So a society, if it, if a society lost 50% of its men, theoretically, it could survive. If it lost 50% of its women, it's dead. <clears throat> because a man can impregnate, I don't know how many women in nine months, a woman can have one baby. So evolutionarily speaking, it made sense that men evolved to take more risks, to be physically stronger, to be the ones taking those types of risks, because we're the ones that are expendable, mm -hmm. uh, whereas women are not. So when you go to war and you're going to lose half your people, you ain't going to send the women out. Mm -hmm. Because then your your society's screwed. You're gonna send out all the dudes because uh, half of them come back. Well, we're still cool. So that's that's kind of that's the driver. Yeah. I would imagine too there'd be a factor of of women um, sort of escaping some of their like societal pressures and things and like you know the uh, oppressive sort of they want to be a part of it, but you know <coughs> it, it's not culturally acceptable in that society. So they run off and start their own. So thing. they like you know they dress up as a man and then they they oh uh, you like know, Mulan. Is, am I saying like a Disney movie? Yeah, yeah. Oh. is that what happened to Mulan? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Is I don't know. Happens? You guys didn't watch Mulan? I think I have, but I don't remember that. Remember her, her, yeah, her of course. Her, they, they they were doing a draft, and her dad was old, and he and he didn't have a male, like he didn't have a son who could, so he had to go fight, and he's old, oh. so she pretended to be a boy. So she could go fight. Oh, I didn't yeah. remember that. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's oh, a great that's a, I imagine that happened. Though. I mean, we're, we're having this conversation in, in my house right now because the, obviously with she, a- Does Katrina want to go hunt or something? No, <laughs> no, no. I, I actually consider her more hunter-esque of a, of a female for the most part in a relationship. And we're at a point in a relationship where I think, and it's interesting for me because it's, it's, a, it's a changing phenomenon for me because I think I was very attracted to that for most of my life. And now we're at a point in a life where- I don't need her help slaying anything with me. And so I, and there's other things that she I I could I need her help with that I find that she's better at than I am. And so it's the kind of the little bit of shifting of of roles in the household and the the struggle of that because you've identified as this very power driven successful independent woman your your whole life and i'm sure justin you've probably related mm -hmm. to some of this i mean you have yeah. you, you're married to one very similar yep. who for most of her life had a, a great career and was a killer and stuff like that and so mm -hmm. it's a bit of this kind of and that what i was drawing back to i said honey i said it's like i'm sure there was I, I don't i don't not think that you you being a woman you can't be a killer in business and do all those things at all I'm, i've been for it our entire relationship it's just where we're at in our current relationship it's less needed for mm -hmm. what we where, where we're at, where we're at where we were ten years ago it was it was huge it was important it was paramount but where we're at now it's not as important and really what we're looking at right now is that you you and I both are these these two hunters in this situation then we also have some gathering and some other things that we we need some help it's we may not be spending as much time doing it. we're both doing this like crazy and it's like I've already proven to you that I can hunt as well or better. So why are we both doing that so much mm -hmm. when you can probably pull back on some of that and spend more time? And then of course that's a, that's a challenge. There's been a shift. That, yeah. A bit. And I think roles kind of change a bit too, based on circumstance and environment, you know, with that as well. And right. too, like with, um, uh, even child development, like, so where we're at now with our kids, like even, uh, in terms of them, like having even less, um, I guess like, 
Courtney having a lot less impact in terms of like them listening and it, on the disciplinary side of things, right? And so this is one of those things where, you know, she's been struggling through and realizing that she has to pull me in a lot more now to, um, you know, really establish that firm um, sort of boundaries and, and walls and things because um, they want to push back and they want to push hard. Like, they don't want to listen to mom at all. Yeah. You know, and this is just, this is really hard because it's And you like, just come in as backup. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just coming to support, but like that needs to happen now. Whereas before it was like, you know, she could, you know, sort of establish that and it was yeah. like not as much of an issue. Yeah, the way I look at it is it's just, uh, if you run a family, it's just, it's like running a business. It makes no or sense for everybody to do or, everything. Or a sport or a sports team. Yeah. Yeah. You just, yeah. and so look, yeah. it, it doesn't matter if the guy is, is if the, if the wife does a better job of earning and the husband does a better job of managing all the other stuff, which is also very important. So it doesn't matter who's doing what. But it does matter that it's more efficient to divide labor. Well, and, and you know, to, just it, it's and everybody's and, everything. It's well, and to Justin's point that I think is such an important point is that at different seasons of your life, the, the the priorities shift in that way. Like, of course, that when we didn't have Max, it didn't. I mean, fuck, there wasn't a. as much. Yeah, grab grab your bow and arrow. Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's go, go hunt go. together yeah. all right. day. You know what I'm saying? It's not we ain't got nothing to worry about back home. So there was there yeah. was different, and now the priorities have shifted, and then it, and it's like. And and I and your to your point, I, I always use either the 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 hunting gathering type of anal analogy, or I use the sport like you know power forward center position versus a point guard. That position. probably is more effective with her. It, well, of course, right? <laughs> she was a college basketball. Player. Yeah, 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 and I do that to her all the time. I'm like, why? It's like, like, yeah. but why? Why are we both fighting for the ball to run point? It's like it doesn't make sense. It's like go dominate at center. Go 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 dominate at that because that's what we need. That's what we need right now, and and trust that I can run point. Or vice versa, like to your point. Set like, some picks. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> if you can handle the ball better, then you can run point. That's fucking fine. Then handle do the ball, that. baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, th I think, no, I mean, d dividing labor just makes a lot of sense. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's it's clear cut, but I think if you run a household, well, that it makes sense that, okay, I handle this thing, you handle that thing, I handle this thing, you handle that thing, versus let's all handle everything because then shit slips in, through the cracks and way. then, oh, you're not doing it as well as I do and this and that. No, no. It well, makes don't sense you guys feel like in the last like 30 to 40 years, this has become more difficult in more households? Well, yeah. You know, I feel like, I think, I feel like course. the, uh, there's been so Roles much and identity have been very convoluted. Yes. Right. They, I think, and okay, rightfully so. I think like we always are, I think we were too extreme one direction. I think we overcorrected. And now we're in the middle of we're just this, figuring uh, out of figuring it out yeah, yeah. of that. There, there is some value to some of the, these natural things that we each are better at. It's not sexist. It's not a big deal, but it's not like that. And, and there are always exceptions to the rule. Yeah. There's always someone in that household. What it, what it was is in the past, the, the, the roles were, it made a lot of sense that, okay, one of us has to grab a spear go, you know, hike for, you know, 15 miles, go kill this big animal, drag it back. Uh, one of us has to nurse the baby. Makes sense that it, that it was the man that did this and the woman that. And then what happens, we created societies where we're very safe, where the jobs weren't so physically, didn't require you to have so much physical strength or so much danger, where women didn't necessarily have to, you know, be there to care for the, the baby, where the baby could be cared for by the father. So now the roles aren't so clear cut and you're just figuring it out. You have to figure, but I still agree that you have to divide the labor somehow. This whole, that's where it gets confusing where everybody does everything. No. Now nobody does anything. Well, it also or, gets confusing. And, and part resentment. of the thing that I know she mentions that she, she, she was challenged with is that we also do this thing where we measure everything in dollars. And so, so a lot of people assume I, that's such a disservice to people, it is, people I, who raise I, children. I, I, just, so well, I, I told her that I said, you, what sure. I just watched her go through with the potty training, I, she gets full credit for that. Like I literally had nothing to do with that. Like if, if I added any value, it was handling other things going yeah. on in our house while she was all hands on deck on that. And if, and I'm like, you can't put a dollar amount. It's worth that. more than money. Uh, it's worth it's tons your, it's more. It's your kid. It's worth it's, yeah. I said, all the money that I made in that entire week, week, what you just did in one week's time was worth five X that. So you can't, you cannot say because all of a sudden now you you've decided you're not going to be this hunter and contributing this dollar amount to the yeah. to the pot or everything like that that you're not adding more value. Mm -hmm. I I th and and I said and this has changed for me until when until I had a son until you became uh, the mother of my son. I I didn't look at it like that. I do look at it like that now. And it, and I I can honestly say that is completely shifted. It's, it's sad because um I can't think of <clears throat> in, in a household with with children. 
I can't think of anything more important in that household than uh, making sure that the kids are taken care of, raised, and cared for, mm -hmm. right? I, there's nothing more important than that. Now, there's lots of factors that go into that, including earning money yeah, and all that stuff. It's a sense of safety, you know, <laughs> but, in home. But there's, a, I mean, a whole generation, our generation, that's our also, generation were kids that came also, up from school. That's also our legacy. That they, It's them, What the things that you pass down and you give to them, the way you raise them, and we're going to die. Well, look, okay, we're going to die in the next 40 to 50 years. You don't raise and your the kids, only somebody's going to raise them. And the only, bit, the only them. bit of us that continues to go on and echo is through them. Yeah. And if you do a real shitty job of of raising them and taking care of them and teaching them those values that you've passed down from you, the, the two of you into them, then you you've, you just fucked your well, leg. Like, you I, can't tell me anything's more. Money will come and go. The dollar's crashing. Like we could stockpile that all day long. I don't make shit if we can't pass down our 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 morals, our values, our beliefs, like and just our raise family good name to rate to be yes to be good humans to contribute to society. Like if we can't do that part, then all this other shit doesn't even matter that much. No. So to think that that that's not valued higher and, than and the, the highest wage could ever pay is no, crazy. And to I me. don't it's trust crazy. anybody more than than myself or my wife to raise my kids. Yeah. That's the bottom line. And if you don't raise them. Something's going to raise them. That's right. we, we grew up in a generation where kids came home from school. Nobody was home. This was a whole generation of kids. They, yeah, oh, they have the key to the house. Key, yeah, yeah. And they just sit there and yeah. then raise them with a the television. And there were some, some nasty side effects of that, right? So I think it's, uh, it's real important. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about uh, – you, earlier I mentioned the Spice Girls, which reminded me about pumpkin spice. <laughs> <laughs> did you really say <laughs> Flavor. That? I did. Remember I told Justin was depressed because uh, the Spice Girls. Uh, which one? Yeah. Was there a ginger spice? Uh, what were the names? Got, hey, all kinds don't of remind me. All the pumpkin spice stuff is out, dude. It should have been a full, pumpkin wait, spice girl. Wait, what is what I'm trying to argue. Pumpkin spice. Oh, you said yeah. it with an M this time. You always right. say it with an N, bro. I think you guys all have bad hearing. No, you said pumpkin. Yes, you do, bro, with the N. There's an M in there. <laughs> anyway, pumpkin spice Organifi gold juice is here. It's in season. It's delicious. Mm. By the way, are you guys doing the Christmas blend that I used to do back in the day? Remember that? I, I haven't, haven't done started that. Well. Yeah, it, it was a red juice. You that. Juice. that was something I did. You steal my credit for everything. No, no, I came up with the name. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you get credit. Yeah, so yeah. I did the blend. Hey, like, listen. Hey, we'll call it that Christmas. like the Kermit blend or whatever. Like back, it was like gold and green, right? Gold and green. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much. No, go, no. Uh, it's, it's green juice, red juice mixed together. Great energy producing. Uh, and it tastes great. It tastes great. So it's called the Christmas blend because it's green and red. You know, you're, you're talking about. I've just our, been doing the green. You're talking about our partners right now. And I just saw something really cool with one of our partners. I saw that uh, Butcher Box is now doing lobster, dude. Yeah. they're Actually, they're uh, they're giving it away for free. They're, I don't know how much. Lobster. How much are they giving for free in each box right now, Doug? It's, uh, let's see, 10 ounces of New York strip steaks and 8 ounces of lobster claw and knuckle meat. Free. Oh, so it's free. surf and turf for free. Surf and turf. So if you sign yeah, up right now, a butcher meat. box, and you get your normal box, so you you tell them what you want, you pay your fee for it, and they'll throw in the New York strip steaks, ten ounces of it, and eight ounces of the lobster meat oh, in I, there for free. I like that better than the bacon for free one. I know you guys are big bacon guys, but I'd rather have that surf and turf. Surf and oh, turf. Oh, that is such a great combination. Oh, By the yeah. way, lobster, very anabolic fish to eat. High in cholesterol. Oh, yeah. Oh, high in cholesterol. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Is it considered a fish? Uh, or no. a crustacean? It's a spider. Well, it's, a, it's, it's a in the ocean. Spider. It's basically a spider. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Okay, it's don't, an insect not selling it now. Yeah, yeah. No one's gonna go. <laughs> Good job, Adam. <laughs> It's not a spider. It's I a mean, scorpion. Isn't, it's like a crab. isn't it really a giant spider? Isn't that what They're it, related. That's a crab. I mean, right? huh? They're related. I don't know. Oh, okay, you're right. I so. think I think the lobsters relate related to the scorpion, maybe? Oh, All of them are. Maybe. I think if you're allergic to shellfish... You can't eat scorpion or spider either, Doug. <laughs> yeah, can you I imagine if I know every time I eat them, lobsters? I feel funny. Oh, oh, that would be scary. That you know what that reminds me of? Great movie, uh, shitty effects because it was old. Remember Jason and the Argonauts? Yes. Remember when he fought the the scorpion? Yep. Oh, that's yeah. such a good. I mean, they redid that, and it was not a bad movie. Come on, bro. I didn't know that. Hey, are you are you watching your Star Wars yet? Oh yeah, I finally, Andor. Yeah, I caught Andor. Yes. Is it good? I like it. I haven't started it it's, yet. The, one episode's out so far. You know what I like about it is it's more of like uh, the human story. Like it's less about like Jedi's and Siths and you know this and that and the other. It's more just like um, it, like he's struggling through the fact that like oh, like did I did I just do something that's like a bit on the evil side? You know, can I justify this? So what's for the story? The cause about? of the what's rebellion. The, and, what's the story about? Just the planet of Andor. It's the same guy. So you remember Rogue One? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's that that main leader 
uh, I forget his name, but like he, so they're doing kind of a backstory on him. So please forgive me for not be, to being ignorant on this, but is that the planet that got destroyed when Princess Leia got, was that her planet? Uh, yeah. Oh, so that's, this, so that's the planet they eventually shoot with the, with the, yeah, with the, the Death Star blows it up. Oh, that yes. sucks. That's Andor? No. 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 No, it's not Andor. Okay. Well, was, yeah. Did that I confuse was, you? You yes, come, yeah, you <laughs> yeah, because that's. What I was, was thinking you were talking about Rogue One, like when they blew that. No, I'm talking about Andor. Andor never got destroyed in yeah. the in them. Oh, did I just stump you Justin? Just, uh, yeah. Oh, you're your brain. Oh, no. Star Wars. I can't wait for all the Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in you. <laughs> so Princess you Leia was from Alderaan. Alderaan. Yeah. Oh, Alderaan. there it is. There you go. Uh, there it is. Andoran, Alderaan. 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 Andor. Close. Oh, I'll give it to you. Yeah. Close. Anyway, just you get roasted like it, now but... for that. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna. Hey, watch. We're gonna. Hey, we're gonna be it's, done. He's gonna tell Andrew to edit that out. Yeah, you all whisper. It's gonna be the same ones doing mimetic magic. So I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Bring it, nerds. Yeah. Check this out. There's a lot of companies out there that sell you supplements with nutrients and minerals and vitamins. The problem is your body sometimes doesn't absorb them properly because of the delivery method. Well, there's a company called Live On Labs that uses a pharmaceutical grade liposomal technology that makes sure that when you take their products, it absorbs the nutrients you're taking and gets them delivered to the target tissues. So it's a great company. Go check them out. And right now, if you sign up, you get lipoglutathione for free when you bundle it with B-complex and vitamin C. This is only for Mind Pump listeners. So check them out. Go to liveonlabs.com. That's L-I-V-O-N labs.com forward slash M-P for the hookup. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Nick from Washington. Nick, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, it's good to finally... Yeah, talk to you guys in person and not uh not keep listening to you like I do pretty much every night. Um, well, I'll go ahead and just read my question and then give you guys some background information, um, which I think will be helpful. <clears throat> so, my main question is: Which maps program or workout modifications would you recommend to someone who is focused on growing their leg size and strength? Uh, kind of with the secondary goal of improving their squat. And so some background information about myself. Um, so for the past eight years, I've been one of those types that's, I mean, really a fitness fanatic. And I still work out every day, uh, but I used to chronically overtrain and undereat. And I was spending hours in the gym doing cardio and lifting weights um, while also training for marathons and triathlons. But about four years ago, I was diagnosed with low testosterone and hypothyroidism. And so after playing my own doctor, I believe those uh, the reasons for my low hormones um, was due from um, one, like my high stress workouts and under eating and just my lifestyle in general, but then also from previous concussions that I've had in the past from boxing and from football. And so I found and worked with a coach, a nutritionist, and a therapist for over a year and a half to try to make lifestyle changes to increase my hormone levels. Um, and then that's also kind of around the time when I found you guys, uh, which really helped solidify like some of the changes that I was making. Uh, but going through that process, I really didn't see um, much changes. So like my testosterone was originally at about 60 nanograms per deciliter and it increased to 150. Um, but talking with my coaches, we think um, probably my previous concussions are still playing a role um, and, and it's probably best that I go on um, medication. And so about five months ago, I started on TRT and also uh, thyroid medication. And so I'm still working with different doctors to try to get the dose right and um, actually looking for, for new doctors now. Um, but after listening to you guys more and more, I want to really start changing my focus and like continue to, to focus more on getting stronger and building muscle. Uh, so with that said, my next goal is to focus on increasing my leg size and strength um, kind of over the next three months. And so I just finished MAPS Anabolic, and I've actually started it a second time. 
And uh, but this time, what actually works better with my schedule is I've taken the foundational workouts and have kind of split them um, in half to where I kind of have like a, a leg slash shoulder day, and then um, kind of like more of an upper body day. Um, because really, I kind of only have about 30 to 45 minutes each day to train. And I really like just starting my day in the gym, just having that that positive start to the day. And so like, I was looking through your different programs, and I wasn't sure kind of which would be the best fit for me, kind of given my background and goals. And then if you do have a recommendation, if there are modifications, um, say, changing some different exercises or things like that around uh, to really focus on building my leg strength. Nick, are you still struggling with uh, under eating? No. uh, So actually, um, and so I'm continuing to work with a therapist. um, And so during that year and a half, I I mean, really just stopped running completely, kind of stopped all cardio, uh, able to increase my calories from um, really, I was at 2000, but up to 2600. And then um, saw like some pretty steady weight gain. Uh, but then at this point, I actually just started work. And now that I'm a little bit more sedentary, um, I've found around 2300 right now is about my maintenance. And um, yeah, I, I guess uh, still kind of weighing about like 140 pounds and, um, and 27 years old. So, so I don't want to, I'm not going to, you're work. you're still working with a therapist. So I would continue taking their advice. Um, from the outside, it's, it seems like you're still having some, um, under eating issues, but, um, that's going to be for you and your therapist to kind of work out that if you don't, if that doesn't get addressed, the best strength training program in the world is going to fail to really put the, the, what you're asking for, which is size and strength. Um, you, you're probably gonna have to increase your calories more. However, I don't know your background. I haven't, I'm not a therapist. I don't know what that, what that looks like for you. I don't know how that makes you feel. So I would continue working with the therapist and your nutritionist and work on that. And as far as workout programs concerned, MAPS Anabolics good. MAPS Powerlift would probably be the one yeah. I would, I would go to next, uh, because you, you're focused on, you know, squat strength, um, and leg size. And I mean, powerlift is the best program for that. So if, if you don't have that, I'll send that over to you. Um, but I think you're doing all the right stuff. You're working with the right people. I like the fact that you're working with a therapist because I think the root issue is, is, is going to be solved there. I really do. And, and it's, a, it is a slow process. So I appreciate your honesty. Um, you know, kind of explaining that, but maps powerlift will be the best program, but you're going to have to feed yourself to make that work too. So it, it, even though it's well programmed, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if anything will work well for you unless you really bring those calories up. Uh, but again, do it in a healthy way, meaning I'm not talking about healthy physiologically, but healthy mentally for you, because I've worked with people who have issues with under eating and then they decide they want to go in the other direction and they do this like, well, I'm going to go from 2000 to 4,000 calories. And then, and then, it, and then it, and they go back down to 2000 and they go back up to 4,000. And, and so continue working with the people you're working with, let them know, Hey, look, I, I, I want to put on more weight. I want to gain more strength. Um, how should I do this with my nutrition? Because I know, dis- I know I need to eat more. Have you discussed that with them yet? Have you talked to them about this goal? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, that, and that's what, I mean, we're still working on, um, like increasing my calories and, um, like my weight is still really like the last three or four months has really just been steadily climbing. Um, so I, I've started to see really good progress. And then after finishing MAPS Anabolic, um, I've saw a lot of strength gains, particularly in my upper body um, and still some in my lower body, but not quite as much as I'd like. I think just from um, just all those years of endurance training, I kind of have that endurance strength in my legs, but not so much the the size and strength I'd like. Um, but I, I was, I guess, two follow-up questions for MAPS Powerlift. Like, um, one, are there modifications that you'd make to target the legs? And then two, um, do you have any recommendations for, uh, perhaps like splitting up the workouts into like smaller, uh, sessions just done more frequently? I, I want to go back to what you said in regards to why maybe you think your, your legs aren't responding as much. It's actually more likely the nutrition thing. So okay. I, I mean, just th- those, those are, are big, big those muscles. are big muscles. They mm-hmm. require 
more it's more a building pork. materials. Yeah, it needs more. It needs it needs more. And so you've probably seen a nice increase in the upper body because you've seen a nice slow gradual increase in your calories and that's been enough to see a little bit of muscle pile on your upper body and it's going to be easier to see that those are smaller muscles to see major gains in the in the legs you're going to have seen probably a bigger increase in calorie intake. So literally it's going to go back. I really believe Sal's hitting it right on the head with this one. And it's, this is not a lack of your programming and and it's not a lack of you not already doing the right things. I think it's just in order to put some serious mass on your legs and size and strength, it's going to going to have to happen over time as you get, are able to eat more and more and more calories. And the, and the, the path to that is best answered by your therapist, not by us. Yeah. Thanks for that. I appreciate you saying that, Adam. That's a hundred percent. I mean, it, um, you know, I could tell you to go up to 3000 calories. I don't know what that's going to feel like for you. And I don't know if that's healthy for you, um, just yeah. psychologically. Yeah. So I would go to the therapist and say, Hey, here's what I want to do. How do you think? Cause they know you, right? You've been working with them. How do you think I should do this? What is this going to look like? Now, as far as maps, powerlift is concerned, you don't need to modify that. That's a, I believe a five day program, if I'm not mistaken, so okay. you'll be in the gym five days a week. There's nothing you need to add. It's very, I mean, it's, you know, deadlift and squat is two thirds of the program. It's, right. it's a, it's a bench deadlift squat routine. Now, there's auxiliary work in there, but you're going to gain, if your calories are good and you, you will gain size and lower body. Oh with yeah. That, for sure. Oh yeah. For sure. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. No problem. Nick. You, and you're, you're on the right path, dude. Yeah, you are, dude. Keep us posted. I'd love to hear how, how, it, uh, how everything plays out for you. Well, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, just huge thank you for all the content, everything you guys put out. Um, seriously, y'all have been a great help for myself kind of on this this journey that I've been taking. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for calling in and uh, thanks thanks for being open. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, thank y'all. You got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I like questions like that because so do I. it's good for coaches to hear mm -hmm. what we just said. And I think there's a lot of people that don't realize there's a lot more people out there like that than you realize. There is. And, yeah. and it, look, I could give them the the trainer answer, which is, oh, you're eating 2,300 calories. Bring them up to 3,000 or yeah, 3,200 calories. bring them up, yeah. But I don't know what's going on, uh, how that feels for him in his mind, what his history is with that. I do know he's working with a therapist. He did talk about how had under eating issues and overtraining yeah. issues. And that could be the wrong advice. His therapist may be like, okay, here's what we're going to do, Nick. Let's just see if we can stay consistent at 2,300 calories right, right. for a while before we start to bring you up. Because I know when we bring you up, then you start to feel like it's too much and you want to cut it way back. He already did. He got up to 26 and he brought it down to 23 on his own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that sends a signal to me that says, you know, you're going to want to work with them on this process because this is more... Uh, this can be Yeah, that's the urgent issue. Yes. And I, and I feel like... He a part of me was feeling like he was kind of looking for like a volume. hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. For hundred percent. The athlete might, when I, I heard yeah. him, that's why I stopped him. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, let me, let me correct that. He doesn't for, want the answer to be the diet. No. Yeah. yeah. So I think, yeah, I think you guys nailed it with that. Yeah, the, the athlete always wants to hear the, what else can I do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, what they else? I don't want to hear I, that. Don't do this. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, I, and, and unfortunately we don't know the relationship there with the therapist and him and, and what's been being coached on nutrition. And so he, he or she is, is going to be more right than we are in yeah. this situation. hundred that, percent. That's and the number one. Priority. Always defer to them. And I will say this too, uh, for coaches more often than not, when you get a male client, it, it who has issues with under eating because it's not as common as females. Um, you tend to overlook it, yeah, and you tend to push them differently or in, more inappropriately oh, than you would a woman. It's probably more extreme because you know, like most ma majority of men won't even admit it. 24, yeah. 25 year old me would have given him the answer yeah. to this. Just test. eat more, it, yeah, it, three thousand oh, calories. Oh, you're only eating twenty three hundred calories. You're not seeing gain because. Uh, because that's what it is, but not knowing that he has this, you know, so, you know, kudos to him for her putting himself out there and sharing that because he also could have came on this damn podcast, which would, would be awful and asked us that same question not said and, any and not said anything about that. And then we would have went to the, the calories as an sure. advice was, oh, push it up to 29, bro. You'll yep, be fine. Yep, yep, <laughs> I mean, yep. we would have said that. Although I you. would say this, had he not told us that he was, and this is just an experience thing. Had he not said he was working with a therapist and he had issues with under eating, I would have either a guessed or I would have asked him like, are you like a super fast metabolism? Cause by looking at him yeah. or B no, I'm not. Then I would have been like, Oh, okay. You're probably not eating enough because you know, he said his weight, I don't remember what he said, 140. Yeah, 140 pounds. And, um, I mean, it, it would have been one or the other, you know, yeah. especially if you're strength training, trying to put on size and strength. Yeah. Yeah. 
Our next caller is Anano from Korea. Anano, how can we help you? Uh, hi, guys. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize if I sound too bubbly. I am having a little fangirl moment right now. I'm so excited <laughs> to finally talk to you. Um, so um, I recently, in the start of September, I purchased Skinny Guy Bundle, finally. Uh, and I'm doing Max Anabolic. Uh, and even though I've been consistent with my training since 2014, I still started with the pre-phase. Uh, before I was doing that, I did a few workouts from Saul's book uh, about resistance th training. And after that, I did those five free days you gave up on the YouTube for the first five days for Anabolic for about a month. And then finally, when I got the whole program, I started with the pre-phase. Uh, now I'm in the third week of pre-phase and been doing as consistent with it as I can. But the problem that I noticed is that I'm kind of tired, but it's not like right away. So I get my workout in in the morning and I feel great after two hours. And then after two hours, it just cuts like total i'm like out of energy super sleepy super hungry and so on so my schedule now is like i get my workouts in in the morning before work then i have my part-time job after part-time job i prepare for my thesis so that's how i like that's my schedule and eating and sleep is really out of my hands because i live in a shared house with three and other people and um, they are really loud till 3 4 a.m in the morning and uh, i just eat twice a day in the before 12 p.m and after 9 p.m because that's how when i get off work so like with my schedule how can i fit my workouts in so that I don't feel as tired throughout the day after them. Ooh, that's a tough one. Okay. So it sounds, to, first, do you have caffeine? Uh, do you take caffeine daily? Uh, no, no, not really, because I try to sip on water when I'm working. And before I used to drink sip on coffee, but since I swatched the water, I don't take any caffeine at all. Okay, good. I was, cause I was, I was wondering if you were having a caffeine crash. The other side would be a possible drop in blood sugar. Um, what Your first meal is after your workout, correct? Yes. And what are you eating in that meal? Is it, it, is it a, a fat protein meal? Is it a, a carbohydrate rich meal? What's in there? Um, I switched with two breakfasts. Like one of the days I would eat like um, chicken breast with um, rice and kimchi. Kimchi is like that pickled, you yes. know, Korean side dish. And the other days I would switch it for with ham toast. Depends on the time because I have to rush to work. If I have to time to prepare chicken, I do that. But, sorry. Okay. No problem. What time do you get the, the energy crash? And then what time is the first meal? Uh, first meal is um, between 11 to 12, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then at 12, I set up for work. And I get this like energy crash around two or three p.m. Okay, at work. Okay, try eating. Try making your first meal um, a higher protein, higher fat, no carbohydrate meal, and see if that affects you any better. Because you may be getting a rise in blood sugar and then a drop in blood sugar, which is typically characterized by this like sudden crash of energy, this irritability and cravings. And you mentioned the cravings and the in the crash of energy. So I would start with with a, f a fat protein meal. Uh, so you can make the calories the same. In other words, I don't want you to eat less. Mm -hmm. I want you to make mm -hmm. up the carbohydrates with fats and protein. So you have the same calories, but you're not getting the carbohydrates. So you don't, you know, possibly get that spike and then drop in uh, in blood sugar. You may also just be in doing too much. I mean, you you're working, you're studying and doing school stuff, and are sleeping. Yeah, really people bad. that are disrupting your sleep at home. Um, and then you're also training and working out. And so you're doing a lot. Um, I don't know how you schedule your current workouts, but maybe I would only lift, you know, one to two days a week, full body. And I would choose the days that I feel most rested. So instead of being like, Oh, every Monday, Thursday, I lift, I would go, okay, my goal is to lift two days a week, full body. And I'm going to choose the days that I feel the best other days. I'll be active. I'll walk. I'll do other things that 
uh, promote movement and activity, I think that's always a good thing for us. But then as far as strength training, lifting weights, I'm going to pick the days that I got the best rest the night before and I feel energized to lift and I'm going to lift that maybe once or twice a week. Uh, and see how I respond to because yeah. it could just be uh, you got a lot going but, on. But I mean, if they're up, if they're keeping you up till three a.m., um, you know that that that's a big. That's problem. a tough one to combat. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you have earplugs and eye mask? Do you are you able to kind of cancel out the noise? Uh, I can because I tried earplugs, but then I hear the silence and it even keeps me <laughs> more up. But one of the there is only one person who is like super loud and she's moving out so. Oh, so good. I yeah. think my sleep will get better after yeah. she moves out. Well, okay. the other thing you could yeah. do besides earplugs. White noise. Yeah, white yeah. noise. You get a white noise machine. Um, that that tends to help people if it's if it's noisy. So my wife can't wear earplugs either because same thing. She doesn't like silence, which is kind of weird. So, and I thought, and now that I meet someone else, I know she's not making it up. So I guess it is a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Put earplugs in. No, so I, white noise machine could also help. But I think the lack of sleep, and a possible blood sugar crash would be my two my two top things that I would I would look at based off just what you're saying. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. And I have two more tiny questions. It's more about like uh, workout technique and stuff. So in your program, you have um, hanging leg raises and pull ups, but uh, my grip and my core is super weak to do any of those. Mm -hmm. So I listened to you guys' podcast and I think Justin was giving some alternatives uh, with the hanging leg that leg raises and to do reverse crunches and then progress. Mm -hmm. So that's how I've been like swapping them up. But I don't know what to do with pull-ups. I tried doing just dead hangs instead of pull-ups, but I don't know like if it will work or yeah, what shall I do with pull-ups? Do you have access to a, like a pull-down machine? Rubber bands. Yeah, rubber bands. I mean, even yes. isometrically, if you do that, like focus on the negatives, like at the top holding for a specific amount of time and then slowly going down, um, that's mm -hmm. going to help build up strength. Yeah, uh, so in other words, you get like a bench or a box so you can walk up to the bar so that you're like, it's like you finish the pull-up and then take your feet off the box and then try and hold yourself there for three to five seconds. That would be my isometric. Mm -hmm. Or lower yourself with control. Yeah, real And slow. that would be a rep, right? And if you have a pull-down machine, that's another thing you could do. You could just do pull-downs and build up strength. It's a similar, it's not the same, but it's similar enough mm -hmm. to where you're going to reap some of, the, some of the similar benefits. And then the last option would be getting bands that can support you that you can put around your knee and above to the pull-up bar that will help pull you up and assist you. So those are all options. All right, thank you. And one last question. It's about about the order of the exercises. Sometimes the, when like gym is too packed, I cannot get the certain equipment. So is it okay if I do whatever is available and then go back to it? Or is the order of the exercises super important? It's it's important, but it's not a game it's not a it's not a it doesn't break uh, the program. In other words, it's okay if if you only got it forty five minutes and it's like I gotta get my workout. Um, then it's okay to switch them around, but ideally you would, you would want to do them in order. We run into this all the time with busy gyms. So you just kind of have to be a little bit flexible. It is good to follow it in, in the certain sequence. We have it just because of, you know, what we're building up towards in the workout. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not going to kill the workout if you do it out of order. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I wanted to start this with, <laughs> start my introduction with it, but I want to start Thank all, whole your team, whole oh, mind pump team for everything you do. You're like a light in the dark room for me, and I'm really glad I found your podcast. Oh, wow. Oh, thank, thank you yeah. so much. Listen, and can I give you something for free? I know you have the bundle. So is there any program you don't yeah. have that you would like for free? Uh, basically, I don't have anything except the Skinny Guy bundle because that was like I saved up to afford this. So, yeah, yeah it's just everything it's I have. Symmetry. Yeah, yeah I'm going to send you map symmetry, have. okay? Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah, no thank problem. You guys. And thank you so much for following the show. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for calling. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. Bye. What a sweetheart. I like her so much. Yeah. She's so sweet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe boy, saved your marriage too. Huh? Maybe I know. I thought my wife made that up. She's like, I don't like the earplugs because it makes everything so silent. Silence I'm like, what? makes me crazy. What the hell? Yeah. You know? Um, no, I've heard I, that before. You know, the, the energy crash thing is funny. It, well, not funny. That's interesting, right? You get like, if when you notice like a sudden dip where it's like, oh, it, it, it's, it's typically, blood sugar it's typically right? usually blood sugar. 
related or uh, your caffeine crash, right? Mm-hmm. Your AM caffeine just wore off right. and you're getting the sudden crash. So those are always the two the two first places I look at, but um, but that's tough too with the sleep. You know, yeah, it sleep. is tough. And what she could be feeling from the workout, the two hour being energized, is just cortisol. She's just getting a spike yep. from that, and so it's giving her an artificial signal that she's feeling energized and yeah. good, and she's actually really feeling down and out. She just pushed herself through the workout. So she and that might be because she's just doing overall too much, too much stress, not enough sleep, mm-hmm. but, and and so it could be you know a whole host of different things. Our next caller is Elijah from Louisiana. Elijah, how can we help you? Thanks for calling in. Of course. Um, sorry, I kind of got flustered there, so I'll go straight to my question. Um, it is about fasting, and I want to know if, if that is something that I should look into. It's one of the few things that I've never really experimented with, but I've always been curious about it. Um, and with some background, I have a lot of stress on my plate right now. I'm currently... Uh, I have my own training business that I've been running for a few years there. So I do like nutrition coaching and trading pretty much full time, but I'm in nursing school as well to eventually become a, like an endocrinology nurse practitioner, which big shout out to you guys. A lot of the interviews that you guys do really have kind of pushed me in that direction. So I'd love to have like a hormone clinic uh, myself one day. Uh, I also just recently got married and uh, you know, we're still kind of having a reception in a couple of weeks. So we have a lot on my plate, and um, I'm also currently training for a strongman competition that my friend convinced me to do, I, because it's different than American Ninja Warrior, which I recently went on, so I'm just, you know, changing things up. I'm wondering if something like fasting would be a little too much to add, or and maybe wait in order to add something to experiment with, with fasting, or if I should maybe try it out, and maybe it will even help me with mental clarity for school. You sound like you're uh, pretty lazy, uh, Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, I don't, I don't like to work hard at all. So. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. curious what the other guys are going to say, but um, there's lots of health benefits to long long fasts, right? I just came off of a three-day fast. Absolutely, I love doing this. Uh, I am not doing nearly as much as you're doing right now. Uh, and and you have to understand that it is also a stress to do that. To not eat for three days is is a stress. Now it creates a, a lot of positive benefits from it. Uh, the the question that I would have would be, I don't. Is it ideal for someone like you, where with everything you currently have on your plate, and are you are you missing out on so much by not doing it right now? Um, I don't know. I probably wouldn't push you in this direction. Uh, to, to do this because of everything you already have currently going. Yeah. You, the, the benefits of fasting, the main benefits really are the, you know, for lack of a better term, the spiritual component, the detachment from food. Food is very important for, for us as humans and not eating for a, a certain period of time can bring clarity, spiritual clarity, uh, food relationship clarity. Now this isn't true for everyone. If somebody, if you have a an eating disorder or you have eating or disordered eating in your past, fasting may actually be terrible in that case. Uh, but in other cases it's great, but for athletic performance, for fitness, for fat loss, it doesn't, it's, I mean, it it maybe can provide some structure for some people, but there's no additional benefit. And if you're going to do strongman training, uh, I think fasting is going to be, it's gonna be, um, counter. Yeah. It's gonna be counter to your goals because you have to consume X amount of you know food and calories and proteins and, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be difficult to do if you have to eat only in a six hour window or whatever you decide to do. So, um, unless you're trying to to change your relationship to food or enhance your relationship to food, you want to go without. You want you want to experience detachment. Which, by the way, you could fast from a lot of things. It doesn't have to be food. It could be electronics. It could be sex. It could be alcohol. It could be a lot of different things. Um, but if you want to experience that, then I would say fast. But uh, according based on your goals and your your schedule, it's not going to benefit. Um, you, you know, any of those things. Yeah. I think it's, uh, honestly, I think fasting is beneficial, but you need to create that space for it. And I, it doesn't sound to me like there's a lot of opportunity for you to kind of make that kind of space to, to really get into that, um, you know, awareness side of it, that spiritual side of it, where you can remove yourself from all those other things you have on your plate and what's going on. 
Um, so if that does come up down the road and you want to, you know, make that a priority, I think it'd be beneficial. It'd, it'd bring a lot of insight and, and you know, I, I love it for the introspective part of it. Uh, and, and to be able to look at like the, the habits that I'm used to and like, uh, what draws me to food and, um, you know, where, where all of those things sort of stack up on, on my daily schedule. Um, but it, it, as far as like it being something that you add into the mix of all these other, you know, training heavy, um, you know, demands of work and, and school and all that, I just don't think it's a good time for that. Yeah. If you, if you, if you were like, if you weren't doing strong man and you were just running your business and you're like, you know, I'd like to just see how my body reacts without food and then with food. And I'd like to see how I handle, you know, um, anxiety or how I handle certain things, how, you know, at lunchtime I find I have to eat cause I get irritable. Well, what is that? What is that going to be then when I don't eat and how am I going to deal with those feelings? Like then that's okay. But with, with what you're trying to do, especially with the strongman training, I don't think it's going to be uh, beneficial at all. By the way, are those Ninja Turtles on the wall in the back. Yeah. 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 That's pretty, yeah. that's pretty rad, dude. That is awesome. That's pretty rad. Yeah. Good deal. But anyway, I hope that answers Turtle your power. question. Can we give him like a strongman program? Just oh for, yeah, for let's the... give you. We'll send you Map Strong. Do you have a, Do you have our any of our programs? Uh, I have almost all of them. Um, I have Map Strong. Okay. Uh, I've kind of been breaking it up into like even thirty minute windows with the time that I have. Um, my my big goal with the strongman really is I have, I have two goals, which is just not get last, and then don't hurt <laughs> myself trying not. Last. Those are good goals. There I like that. Yeah. That's, that's a good first goal. Yeah. Yeah. The bar reasonable. Because yeah. a lot of with fasting is I, you know, I've, I've never done it, so I wanted to challenge myself. So then eventually maybe I could coach clients through it. But oh. I, oh, I struggle okay. for getting my clients to experiment with it, just because I don't have a lot of experience. Oh, it, that's but well. That's a that's that brings a okay. Angle. Yeah, that's a whole different that's a whole different point now. Yeah, I can see some value there. Now, now I do see value in that, especially if you just do like one one week. You know, plant plant plan it on a weekend when there you, go. you you know that you have the like you obviously have a lot on your plate, and I'm sure that ebb and flows right. And probably there's more stressful weeks and other weeks and there's better weekends than not better than not good weekends. So find what you would consider a good weekend where you have the least amount on your plate and say, Hey, you know what? I'm going to do a 24 or 48 hour fast this go. weekend. And you really are doing it for research purpose. I just, I want to see what it feels like. I want to see if I have cravings more on the first day or the second day. I want to see what I find myself drawn to. I want to see when I come out of it, uh, how my body responds to certain foods and how I need like. Yeah, I think there's uh, tr now there's tremendous value as a coach who wants to have uh, wants to be able to communicate that better to his people that potentially could have a get a lot of value from fasting. N that changes my answer completely. So mm -hmm. now I'm now I'm pro. That's exactly that's yeah. I'm sorry. And that won't be in like a, a hyper stress environment necessarily. It it will. I should be able to manage that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would. I, right. I think I like what Adam said. I would pick a weekend and do like a 48 hour fast just for research purposes, mm -hmm. like a slow weekend where you're not doing much. And, um, that way you can kind of see what it's like. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. And, uh, yeah, I'll end it with, I'm, I'm, I know everyone does it. So I'm not going to tell you guys, uh, how appreciative for the podcast is. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not, but I do think you've made a much better trainer, uh, almost adding experience to my experience because of the, even bringing it back to the basics that you guys talk about. So I'm not going to tell you guys how thankful I am for you, but All right. <laughs> thanks for not I doing that. that. Yeah. Thank thanks, you. Elijah. Thanks, Elijah. Have a good day. You got it. Yeah. You know, that's good. I'm, I'm glad people heard that because, uh, the answer was no. And then it became, yeah, yeah, you know, it really depends. It depends it's all about a lot. Context. Yeah. I, I don't how like fasting. I don't like fasting for weight loss. I don't like fasting to get ripped, but for, and I don't even like, and I don't even really let necessarily like him doing it for the spiritual reasons where he's currently at. Yeah, that's true. He's got strong man goals, he's got all these things. But then you throw in something like, "Hey, I'm a coach. Mm -hmm. I coach lots of people. Yep. I, I I see. Mean, I, I, I listen to you guys. I hear that you guys talk about the benefits of that the the spiritual side and the people that can really really need it for the relationship with food." And so I already recommend it, but I've never really experienced it myself. I want to be able to communicate it. But whoa, okay, total different thing. Yeah. I'll take a bad week of training. I'll take off training for that week if you really. So if you really want that, that that's such a priority now to me yep. for my my career and being a better coach. That I'll put the the strongman training for the week on the back burner. Say I'm going to take li lifting off completely, and I'm going to pick two days that are the easiest days of my week, and I'm going to fast for forty hours. So yeah. just so because that that those two days will provide so much more insight for him 
and the ability for him to communicate to those coaches that has tremendous value. Yeah, and by the way, we have a fasting guide if, if anyone's interested in, in just kind of the basics of different methods of fasting. And right that, here. It's right. No, it's... It's yeah. It's right here. Right, right, right here. Right here. Right. But for those of you just listening, it's uh, mapsfitnessproducts.com uh, where you'll find that. Also, if you like this podcast and you want more free stuff, we have so much free great stuff that we create to help you with your health and fitness goals. Go to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We've got a lot of guides that can help you with almost any goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps, and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets, at the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out, and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.